Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so we're in the process of looking now at how you get uh, degradation of the bone, uh, which is, um, well, the bones which are involved in the synovial joint where you have this uh, synovitis occurring. And we've discussed that what's going to happen is that dendritic cells, which are infiltrating into the synovial joint, uh, are going to present autoantigens to CD4 positive naive T cells, activate those CD4 positive naive T cells, and these are going to firstly differentiate into T helper naught cells and then proliferate, and you'll have a whole population of T helper naught cells. Now, basically, uh, a long time ago, well, not that long ago, but the old story was that this, these T helper naught cells then differentiated into T helper 1 cells, okay? And you therefore ended up with a huge number of T helper 1 cells in the uh, synovial joint, and they release cytokines such as interferon gamma. IFN gamma, okay? Uh, so this is interferon gamma, uh, which is then responsible for triggering the degradation of the bone. However, this story is gradually being faded out. This is the old story, basically, because when you actually look at the synovial joints that are uh, inflamed in rheumatoid arthritis, you find very low levels of interferon gamma and very low levels of T helper 1 cells. So it doesn't seem to involve T helper 1 cells massively. Yes, a few of these will differentiate into T helper 1 cells and release interferon gamma, but the majority of these T helper naught cells seem to differentiate into a different type of T helper cell. Okay, and this is not a T helper 2 cell. Instead, it is a T helper 17 cell. Okay, so this stands for T helper 17. Okay, so you end up with a huge number of these T helper 17 cells in the synovial membrane and also in the uh, synovial fluid of the synovial joint. Okay, now what do these T helper 17 cells do? Well, they secrete a number of very powerful cytokines. Okay, so let's discuss which cytokines the T helper 17 cells are going to secrete. So they secrete huge amounts of uh, free cytokines, which I draw here. So they're going to secrete large amounts of interleukin-17. Okay, this is the main uh, cytokine that T helper 17 cells secrete. That's the origin of their name. Okay, so interleukin-17. Then also tumor necrosis factor alpha and also interleukin-1, so they secrete large amounts of these three cytokines. Now, of course, tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1 are going to, you know, activate uh, endothelial cells. They're going to cause type 2 activation, and they're going to continue the inflammatory response occurring. However, these three cytokines are also going to be responsible for the degradation of the bone, and let me explain how. Okay, so let's go over the page where we've got a bit more space. So, basically, um, we've described that in the synovitis, you are getting monocytes. Okay, so I'll draw one of these. You're getting monocytes coming out of the blood and into the synovial tissue, basically, into the synovial membrane, and then they can go from the synovial membrane into uh, the synovial fluid. And when they come into the synovial membrane, or uh, the synovial fluid, they differentiate into a different type of cell, and we've seen that they can differentiate into macrophages, differentiate into dendritic cells, but now there's another type of cell that they can differentiate into. They can differentiate into osteoclasts, okay, which are cells which degrade bone, okay? Now, in order for them to um, differentiate into osteoclasts, you need certain signals. Now, interleukin-17, interleukin-1, and tumor necrosis factor alpha are the three main cytokines which have been released by uh, these uh, T helper 17 cells, which are the major cell type that we believe is now involved in this um, 
adaptive immune response against this autoantigen. Okay, and now what these cells do is they do not help the monocytes differentiate into osteoclasts, but instead they trigger cells that are within the synovial joint, so maybe cells that are involved in the synovial membrane or cells which are within the synovial fluid, they trigger these cells to release two very important molecules, okay? So they trigger cells in the synovial joint, okay, and the exact cells are a bit controversial, but they trigger some cells in the synovial joint to start secreting uh, two major molecules. Now one of them is macrophage colony stimulating factor, which for short is MCSF. So let me write out the full name for this down here. Okay, so the full name for MCSF is macrophage, and then CSF doesn't stand for cerebrospinal fluid, but instead stands for colony stimulating factor. Okay, so one of the major things that these cells of the synovial joint start, start producing is macrophage colony stimulating factor. So macrophage colony stimulating factor is going to go up within the uh, synovial joint uh, fluid. It's also going to go up within the interstitial fluid of the synovial membrane. And the other one that's going to be produced is a uh, molecule known as rank L. Okay, and rank L stands for receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand. Okay, so the R is for receptor, and I'm a little worried now that this isn't all going to fit in there, but never mind. Uh, the A is for activator, okay, of uh, nuclear factor kappa B. Okay, so I should have probably just written NF kappa B, but then my nuclear factor and then kappa B, okay, so R is for receptor, A is for activator, N is for nuclear, K is for kappa, and then the L is for ligand. So this is the receptor activator of NF kappa B ligand, okay, so let me just separate that off from the cells in synovial joints. Right, now, the MCSF is going to act on a receptor on the surface of the monocytes, uh, which is known as the macrophage colony stimulating factor receptor, okay? And this is going to trigger the first part of the differentiation into osteoclasts. Rank L, the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand, is going to act on rank, the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B, uh, and that will cause the second part of the differentiation. So MCSF causes the initial part of the differentiation of a monocyte into an osteoclast, and then rank L acting on its uh, rank. Uh, which is the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B, is then going to cause the final part of the differentiation into osteoclasts. So maybe I should separate it up into two separate parts. Okay, so this is triggered by MCSF, this is triggered by rank L. Okay, and these two molecules, um, they will be triggered to be produced by cells in the synovial joints by the cytokines which are released by T helper uh, 17 cells. Okay, right, so monocytes come into the uh, synovial uh, membrane, okay, so they come into the interstitial fluid of the synovial membrane because of the synovitis and the activation of the endothelial cells. They then come into contact with this very high level of MCSF and rank L, and they cause the differentiation of these monocytes into osteoclasts. Now what happens is the osteoclasts start degrading bone. Now, let's have a look at our picture. Well, actually, I'll draw another picture of the um, synovial joint again. So here are our two bones involved in the synovial joint. Here is the hyaline cartilage, uh, which covers the ends of the two bones. Okay, here is the um, synovial membrane in orange, which should now be absolutely massive because it has undergone so much inflammation. And then outside of it, you then still have uh, the um, fibrous portion of the joint capsule. Okay, so here is a little picture of a synovial joint. Okay, now the osteoclasts are going to 
specifically gain access to the bone right down here basically this is going to, these places are going to be their targets okay because if they were in the synovial fluid, they can't actually get to bone because of the hyaline cartilage covering. The only place that the synovial membrane comes into contact with the bone is right over here. Now, the synovial membrane is where the inflammation is happening, so you're going to be forming osteoclasts in the synovial membrane. And the only place where the osteoclasts are actually going to get access to bone is over here. So the osteoclasts that are formed over here are going to start degrading the bone, and what you'll get is large cracks into the bone where the osteoclasts are just degrading it and then inflammatory tissue will infiltrate in so you don't just leave empty gaps you get a huge amount of inflammatory tissue basically formed in here so lots of inflammatory cells and things like that loads of fibrin and this tissue that you form in there is known as panis okay or panis tissue in full so, this is how you gradually get the degradation of the bones that are involved in the synovial joint where uh, you actually have this rheumatoid arthritis occurring in that synovial joint. Okay then, so that describes the pathology uh, of rheumatoid arthritis. In upcoming videos in this playlist, we'll look at drug treatments of rheumatoid arthritis.